Hi, my name is Linda Wynn, and I am part Lincoln and part German. And I'm so honored today to be interviewed and share with you my experiences of finally uh, becoming a librarian. It all started when my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, always took me to the library so I could check out library books. And she would also read to me every night and I just loved the adventures. Then when I was starting school, I became a student librarian in sixth grade. And that was a privilege. So after school, after sixth grade, I got to put books away and talk with the librarian. But it didn't stop there. When I was in middle school, I got to be at the checkout desk and I got to see my school friends and got to help them to check out books. I didn't work in the library when I was in high school. However, I, all, I loved going to the library really early in the morning because I walked to school. After I'd done all my chores and everything, I always end up at the high school library, either finishing up some homework or just browsing through the books. Libraries have always been in my life and I'm an avid reader more so now but finally oh i would say in the year 2001 or 2002 i was surfing the internet at that time and was looking for a possible library school i was thinking and i came across university of british columbia they had a program that really met my needs meaning the focus was on northwest coastal indians i was kind of concerned about the cost because i'm not a citizen of canada but anyway um i inquired and uh i also did my research uh, when my career research at a community college i took tests and personality tests and everything and lo and behold it recommended librarian and i'm going that's my path so i i uh, asked the uh, American Library Association questions about librarianship. I did more research about a career in library school and uh, I was getting really excited. So the next thing I did, there must be some scholarships or something like that. And being half Alaska Native, of course there was. Clinkett and Haida, I'm a member of. I'm a, also a uh, shareholder for the Alaska Corporation, Alaska Native owned corporation. And I'm also um, a stockholder for or a shareholder for Cluck One Inc, which is a village corporation and they offer scholarships. So there I go. But when I found out how much it costs, I, I was short and I'm going, oh, what am I going to do now? I kept searching for scholarships and I came across a program called Knowledge River at University of Arizona. And it was the ticket. And I was so thrilled because they received an IMLS grant and, uh, and it covered the full two years for a master's program in library and information science with a focus on Native American and Hispanic perspectives. I was so excited. So I, I put my application in and I, and I just wait and see. I was kind of stressed out that I had to take the GRC. Uh, I kind of freaked out on tests, uh, especially when they're timed you know what i mean especially uh, writing a an essay and uh vocabulary that was my weakness but my strength was sciences and math 
anyway, I went ahead and did the GRC. I understood that it was a, uh, a tool that they must uh, fulfill a requirement for the university, but it, it was considered a um, low uh, criteria when they're reviewing applicants. After a month gone by, I received a letter of acceptance and it was, I was so thrilled. The, the one thing that they required was that I needed to be on campus. And here I was at that time, I lived in Washington state. So talked it over with my husband and he, he is so wonderful. He supported me 100%. So he helped me move to Tucson, Arizona. Wow, what a change that was for me. Because being in Washington State, being Alaska Native, accustomed looking at large bodies of water, mountains and trees and wildlife. And here I ended up in a desert, the swirls, hardly any water. But... Um, uh, it was it was a challenge for me to to switch over seriously, and when I was I moved down there in July and it was 117 degrees. It was warm, really warm. My husband wasn't able to move with me because he had a job back in Washington, so I was there all by myself. And that took another adjustment, too, because that meant I need to make friends. Well, I moved down there in July, October, after I started my classes in late August. I, I was homesick. And so uh, I sought out help on campus. The campus was beautiful and it was friendly. And oh, and I wasn't the only Alaska native. There were a few others too, not from my neck of the woods, but uh, just the idea that there was other Alaska native students just, just helped me a little bit more to overcome my challenge. So as time went on, we, we became good friends. Um, we hung out sometimes afterwards, after our classes, but I was so determined that I want to have good grades and uh, focus on my studies. A couple of my Latino friends urged me, come on, Linda, let's go have some fun. You, you study too hard. And I said, oh, okay. And so they, they helped me to have some fun, and I'm glad I did because I, I had some more friends that we could talk about our assignments and how our classes are going and how we felt. And the campus, there was so much resources that I was able to access. And there was even a graduate, um, a Native American graduate club where there was like, um, like a little house where you can hang out, you can cook your own meals, you can share. Like for me, I shared my smoked fish and crackers and it was just so much fun to be with other uh, Native American people, especially the Navajo. Well, after reaching out and getting comfortable, there were some um, assignments that I had done that required me to work with um, the Navajo people. And I got to be a tutor uh, since my math was my strong uh, subject. I was able to tutor high school uh, Navajo children in a charter school. It was fun. I enjoy helping them understand abstract con uh, concepts of math. Also, I put together um, a web, uh, how to use the internet for the same charter school children or teens, as well as parents in their welcome uh, open house. So I put together a presentation and I shown um, the students and especially the parents 
all about how do you determine this is a good internet source and how to uh, understand the Boolean search and how you can use keywords or, you know, ask yourself some questions before you begin your search. So I don't know about you, but the internet can, can get you off track and you will have too much information. Oh, my favorite class while I was in there. Um, was I was really interested in the digital. I have a background in um, uh, as a computer aid draftsman. So I was kind of curious about how digital uh, resources and uh, the internet work for us librarians because we were in the transition and, and at that time in 2002 and 2003 because the internet was starting to get really uh, fascinating in the 1990s. And I love research. I love, I love walking through the stacks, especially when they have still hard copy journals, because I love, I love going through the table of contents or the index and find out what's in that publication. Usually a whole year's worth is bound. And so it was rather easy. But today we have databases and it's it's the access is wonderful, but it's still in my mind, I miss going through the, the hardbound and you'd be amazed what you find. Uh, if you don't ask the right question or come up with the right, right um, keyword to find what you're looking for. And I and I I when I research, I really I really uh, look in the other disciplines like social science, medical, math, applied sciences, social sciences, psychology, even architecture, you will be amazed what you find in, in um, Native American perspectives and um, Hispanic. It was um, quite, quite an adventure, especially when an institution like University of Arizona's library is, is uh, huge, a huge uh, holdings of the Native American and Hispanic. However, as Alaska Native, um, there was some um, holdings in there, but um, but I was because of the internet, I was able to get in touch with University of Alaska and see Alaska Heritage Institute, which is a nonprofit organization that had some resources or I knew somebody I could ask questions if I was doing research. University of Alaska Fairbanks was a, a pot of gold for me because they had a lot of the information there, especially about Alaska Natives and language. And um, also the University of Alaska Anchorage campus had professors that were uh, Alaska Native and uh, they had wealth of information too. And the University of Alaska Fairbanks, they put together Alaska Native Knowledge Network. That was also a nice um, repository of online information. Well, be, I said earlier that I want, was focused on getting my degree done and I was down there by myself. I, I took summer classes in 2002. I took winter on um, classes that was, you know, during Christmas time and everything. And in lieu of writing a master thesis, I went and did a, uh, oh, I think it was four months, four or five months as an paid intern at Sea Alaska Corporation. And all of that, including the internship, uh, took me less than two years. It took me up, um, not even quite 18 months. And so, and I graduated with a, uh, 
a 3.6. So I feel really proud of myself. And um, I did get a couple of more smaller scholarships and I kept a really good folder and kept that updated of my um, leadership skills, uh, the tutoring that I've done and everything. I even worked part time at the library as well and helped my, my um, cohorts in their research there for Knowledge River. And this Knowledge River class was the inaugural. It was the very first one. And uh, uh, also, too, uh, they uh, wavered residency, so I didn't have to pay the higher tuition. However, I got really scared because the tuition um, went up on the last semester, another $4,000. And I'm going, oh, my. And that's why I kept up on my uh, resume and what I had done and everything, I was able to apply for more scholarships and the university, the uh, it was called Searles was the name of the library school. And they offered um, some scholarships, they found some money and I applied and thank God I received that extra $4,000 so I can finish up. Um, during my time, I was, um, my, uh, my supervisor wanted me to write a, an article in a response from the library journal that another person had written. And he made some um, remarks that are, that in my mind was inaccurate. He was listed, listing, um, Native American books and he and uh, and uh, he did not include Alaska Natives, he didn't include Canada, he didn't include Mexico and it didn't include Hawaii. And I said, well, that makes up North America, you know, this is not this is not accurate. So she says, well, then you write a a. Um, letter to the editor and explain why and so I and I only had one night to to write it so I did and I gave it back to her and she helped me with my grammar and she and she improved my my um, essay and she submitted it and it got published in the library journal I couldn't believe it I was just blown away anyway I met my mentor through that um, article, he, uh, I needed a letter of recommendation for the Alaska Library Association for a scholarship. And um, he wrote to me, he got my email and he wrote to me, congratulated me on my article and that if I needed anything to give him a message. So I did. I thought, oh, what the heck? I have nothing to lose. So I asked him, I said, I know we just met and everything, but I need this library uh, scholarship. And uh, he's a member of. And so uh, he says, well, just send me your statements that you have written and your resume and everything and all and then he talked to me and asked me questions and everything and then he wrote my my uh, letter of recommendation and months later i received the scholarship and i was able to appear at their conference in juno and uh, thank thank the librarians and received a certificate that I was one of the recipients of, of their scholarship. And that's how I got involved in the Library Association, Association as well as the Alaska Library Association. And my mem mentor was a member of the American Indian Library Association. And he was also a member of the International Foreign 
uh, Forum Library Association. And so he introduced me to go to these conferences and networking. It was fabulous. <clears throat> what a great opportunity. And he was able to find funding through the state library that supports library students or librarians to go to these conferences. And he was he was magic. And to this day, he is still my mentor, but I regard him as more as a colleague. Well, initially, when I was going for a library school, I wanted to be a school librarian because I thought, oh, how cool would that be? Is um, work in schools and have the summers off. That way I can go to my village and, and do cultural things and visit with my family and my elders and stuff. But then I found out <clears throat> you need a teacher's certificate. And here I was in my 50s, mind you. And I'm going, oh, I don't want to add more stress and more money and that sort of thing. And I was thinking, well, what other librarian uh, positions am I interested in? Research, since I love research. And I thought I would love to work in a university research library. Well, then I found out that you have to teach courses and also you need to be published in journals regularly well <clears throat> writing is not my uh, forte uh, writing has been a very difficult uh, challenge for me to overcome but i did when i went to the community college and found my voice and so with the help of my husband, who is an excellent writer and, a po and he writes poems, he helped me um, editing my papers and asking really good questions and stuff and helped me with my grammar. I still struggle with my grammar, but I'm a little bit more comfortable in, in writing. Granted, I'm, I'm not going to be writing a novel. And my, my style of writing is business oriented because I had worked at a corporation as a librarian, records manager, and archivist. And so I had to learn how to write in a business level for senior management because you got to keep your messages short. Well, then after reviewing of what it is I want to do, I thought, oh, since I'm thinking about working in a corporation, I'll be a special librarian. And so I took a couple of courses on that, did my research, and lo and behold, when there was an offer for internship, it was back at to see Alaska Corporation, the Alaska Native Corporation, but they were offering me a paid internship to do records management. And I told the, the hiring supervisor, I said, but I'm into librarianship. She says, there's similarities about records management and librarianship. It's all about organization and how to retrieve information. Oh, okay, I'll give it a try. And that was my paid internship. I was able to transfer my managerial skills working for a telephone company, okay, my uh, associate degree in social sciences or social, yeah, sciences, and then the theories and and uh, of librarianship and methodologies, I was able to see the parallelism between the two. However, records management, um, the, the major difference is that you're dealing with um, confidential uh, documents and disposal a lot of disposal that you had to go by a retention schedule 
And then I, and there was no Dewey Decimal System or Library of Congress subject headings and everything. I had to come up with my own filing system and uh, the, the, the records retention schedule, train people, uh, processing uh, 30 years worth of documents that had to be addressed, disposed, do the paperwork, properly dispose, like uh, incinerator or shredding. Uh, I had a, a little budget that I need to take care of. I wore many hats. I had to interpret legal uh, contracts and understand contracts. I had to understand real estate and uh, support senior management on researching of uh, from old records, support the corporate secretary on their minutes and their resolutions. I even supported and converted the shareholder records that were all paper and I have it all converted digitally and it's in a database as we speak today. And so that's my legacy that I left behind and the uh, the staff that is working in the database is making their life so much easier in processing uh, shareholder relations type issues and documents, gifting, and when a shareholder has died, how to handle those issues as well. Well, um, this has been, I hope this answers some of the questions of of librarianship why i chose it and what my path was and how it evolved to what i'm doing today and you know what it's still in my life i just got through finishing doing a wonderful uh project for sea alaska heritage institute for the Dunnauer's uh, legacy paper collection. I became a process archivist. And so uh, I got to process over uh, 200 boxes and determine what should be kept, what should be indexed, and uh, refoldering, boxing, preparing boxes for freezing before it was put in the vault. And I'm proud to say that it's all in the database and is available online. I've done a presentation uh, for YouTube for electronic presentation. I have done a web uh, draft for web present. Uh, for an archive, archive resource guide to be published online. And, um, oh shoot. Well, anyway, it was a wonderful project and it took me 15 months to, to process going through over 200 boxes and identified 97 boxes of documents and multimedia. And so I'm very proud of that. Now I'm doing a grant for the State of Alaska Library called Bridging Knowledge. And I'm putting together with a co-partner, a mentoring um, program for future librarian students at Santa Jose. And I'm doing a digital conversion um, project as a trainer and a mentor back at my village, which is called Kluckwan, but it's, it's um, the government office is Chilkat Indian Village, and it's for their libraries and archives. So I get to train two people there and share my knowledge on how to prepare material for indexing for the database and makes stuff available digitally on their uh, future website. So as you can see, I'm alive and well in this wonderful world in librarianship. I still have fond memories, still friends I keep in contact with, and I really am excited to still continue in this work. It's an honor to do this interview. Gunachish. 
I am so glad to share my knowledge and my experiences with you. Okay, I'm Erin LaFromboise, Library Director at Medicine Spring Library at Blackfeet Community College on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in Montana. It's good to see you guys. I've met many of you at the um, Alaska Native Heritage Conference in 2018. And I was asked to share some more of what we talked about in 2018. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm definitely open to having, having more conversations if you're interested after, um, after you see the session. So I'm going to talk about my journey uh, through graduate school becoming a master's of library and information studies um, graduate. And the benefits, some of the challenges, some of the things that I definitely feel like I had really good timing in my life, um, but also things that might either convince you to, to go on and get a degree or um, you know, convince you to do what's necessary for, for your library and your own personal situation. So I have been working here at Medicine Spring Library for 12 years, and I started as a library technician with an associate's degree from a tribal college. I had moved home. I had tried to be in college and get a bachelor's degree for many, many years. It just wasn't working out for me. I had five different uh, majors as an undergraduate. I went to five different colleges. I have a lot of debt <laughs> and I also have a lot of credits. I definitely now looking back, none of that necessarily was a bad thing becoming a librarian because I have a little bit of knowledge about a lot of different things which is great because that's something you definitely, you know, need to either have the knowledge or know how to find resources to understand what you're looking for in the library. I got the, I moved home uh, from college, the college town I lived in and worked for one of my cousins. And then the job here at the college opened up. So I started it and within months I had the Dean of academic affairs tell me you should become the librarian. <laughs> Our librarian was older and nearing retirement. And so I said, I definitely want to become the librarian, but I knew that it took a master's degree to have this position. And I didn't even have my bachelor's yet. Um, I searched online. Actually, she gave me this suggestion of the University of Oklahoma. And I think she thought I would have just been getting my master's degree. Uh, they have a, a liberal studies program that worked out really well with, with the, um, the associate's degree I got from Salish Kootenai College. And so I worked for two years and went to school full time for two years and got my bachelor's degree. It was really great. Um, then I got really lucky. And there you might get really lucky if this is something you're interested in. Um, kind of in the short term, I found a scholarship program that paid for my entire graduate school program. And right now the American Indian Library Association is, um, has a program at San Jose State University. They're currently accepting applications. So if the time is right for you, I would definitely go for it. Just see if you can get your graduate school paid for because that's one huge benefit of being in a tribal community is you have the opportunity to qualify for some special scholarships. They're usually grant run, so they come in cycles, but they never go away because there's always a need for minority and especially native librarians out there in the world. So I got, it was called Project Idol. And I got into uh, Wayne State University in Detroit. And it wasn't just for Native students, but it was for students of color. And they had us in the smaller cohort. And the cohort model, it was really great because I, um, 
I had a group of students that I connected to the entire two years. I did six semesters in a row, uh, including summer session, which I'm not a huge fan of summer session, but if you're trying to knock something out of the way, that's definitely the way to do it. Uh, graduate school, a full-time load is nine credits, unlike undergraduate where full-time is 12 credits. And if you're working full-time, I would definitely I would definitely suggest that you take six credits at a time. That additional class is a lot of extra work. And I was able to complete one semester with a full-time uh, course load, but it was very difficult. And it was at a really tough time in my life that I'm very happy now looking back that I made it through. Um, so sometimes, especially if you're working, if you have family, having just the six credits at a time is really a good way to, to move forward in a graduate program. Um, some of the benefits, big, big benefits, I think, is I do the best when I'm around my extended family. They give me a lot of support, whether it's moral support or um, cooking dinner on the weekends, <laughs> things like that are really helpful to, to have that support system while you're in graduate school. Um, I don't have any children. And so my husband, he, I always say he, he quit work to take care of me <laughs> and I needed it. Oh my gosh, I really needed it. I worked full time and then I would go home and have to do my readings and my homework. I spent one full, you know, probably 16 hours a day on the weekend to do homework because I always wanted to go out to my mom and dad's for a Sunday dinner. So I made sure my homework was always done before I went to Sunday, Sunday dinner. And those are the type of things that when you are in school and working full time, it really helps to, to set yourself a schedule. You know, what are my goals this week? What is my homework? Um, what does it look like? Do I have a lot of reading? Do I have a lot of activities? Um, a great thing about this day and age, you've probably gotten used to doing a little more of this, the online um, work with other people. Back then it was kind of new to me before, you know, pandemic made us all go home and learn how to use the online tools. And that was actually really great because I became a, a really good communicator and I feel like I can do a lot more networking and group work as um, as a professional with other people throughout the United States because you know we know how to use the the online platforms and they're very very helpful to getting work done uh, whereas before being on the phone trying to do phone conference calls those were always really hard to figure out who's going to talk next um, you know, even just seeing somebody's face can be helpful at times. Um, I learned late, really late in my online academic career that sometimes having your hands busy kept my mind focused on what was going on in the lecture. So I started beating and um, instead of taking notes, and I found that I actually listened and learned better that way. Um, and that was something I just stumbled across at a, at a kind of a random conference I was at. They had what they called manipulatives on the table. And when they finally explained it to us, I started coloring while they were talking in this conference. And I, I walked away completely engrossed in understanding more than the session before when I was just taking notes in a notebook. So find your best study habits. And as a student, sometimes it takes time to figure out what those are. Um, I definitely needed a space that was just my own. Um, and in our tiny little house, I found I just got um, a plastic table and I set it up as my desk, put a little table runner on it to make it look nice, <laughs> had my laptop. Um, and that's actually something you definitely need. Uh, you need good internet. So it seems kind of without saying, but back then there weren't really a lot of great 
non-wired options. I think that satellite internet has new competition and so it's getting better. And I know in rural Alaska, you're not going to have the necessary, I mean, you're not necessarily gonna have the same opportunities to have wired internet. Um, there are definitely places here on our reservation where um, hot spots don't work. You know, there's, there's no infrastructure to get internet to homes. And so I definitely understand that that can be one of your biggest challenges. If you have a family setting up time um, that they know this is your time to study. And when you're a graduate school student, it makes you feel really selfish. You're taking a lot of time for yourself and for your studies. Um, and that's okay, you know, by having those homework goals, you know, I'm gonna make sure I have Sundays off every week. And that might mean that you spend an extra hour during the, the week to um, finish all your reading or finish your writing assignments. Um, one of the benefits that I think if you don't currently have it in your workplace, it doesn't hurt to ask. Here at Blackfeet Community College, we have up to five hours a week that we can take for education purposes. I definitely used all five of those hours. I didn't leave my desk, but I used that time at my desk to write my papers or to maybe meet with my, my fellow students. Um, if you don't need a master's degree, because especially if you're paying for it yourself, I think that's one thing we're not honest to potential graduate students in the library field is if you don't need that master's degree. So if you're in a village and they're not going to be able to pay you for having a master's degree, um, then think about it. You know, do you want to stay home? Do you want to stay in the village? Um, do you want to move? Do you want to have other career opportunities? You know, those, those are kind of the, the pluses and minuses of getting that online master's degree. Um, because if you're not going to get paid for it, there are definite other ways to learn what you need to know to run a library smoothly. And um, I personally, you know, don't think that you should go into debt for something that you're never going to get paid equi equitably for. Um, here at Blackfeet Community College, our pay is really low. You know, sometimes I, I wish I got paid more. But the reason I'm here is because I want to be in my community. I want to be near my family. And so in the end, some days I gripe about my pay and some days I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter because there's nowhere else in this community I could do the work I'm doing and, um, and get paid for it at all. <laughs> so I've definitely weighed my, um, you know, my pros and cons for getting that, that the master's degree. Um, I definitely think that benefit-wise, other than, you know, this job required a master's degree, I also was able to meet a lot of colleagues. You know, I, I have a large network across the United States, and sometimes this is also not talked about a lot with potential library school students, is that there's a kind of an old school vibe that if you don't have the master's degree, you're not a librarian. I definitely don't believe in that. Um, if you're doing library work, you're a librarian. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Um, I've thought about ways to, you know, maybe trying to come up with ways to advocate for, um, you know, better pay for tribal libraries. And I haven't come up with solutions yet, but those are, you know, sometimes when you have that master's degree, people are going to listen to you in that type of aspect more. Um, as a indigenous person, there are always uh, people looking for people of color. Um, the library field in general is very, um, I think there are, about 20 to 30 percent of librarians are uh, a minority. 
So 60, potentially 60, 70% of librarians are white. So I think that's, you know, other hard truths to learn when you're in library school, you're going to have a hard time finding people who look like you or who have your background. Um, and that's where you have kind of side. Um, I did another presentation about the benefits of joining the American Indian Library Association and having that network sometimes is what's going to get you through. I definitely think it's it's very good to have honest conversations about what library school is like, about the challenges of doing a degree at home. Um, but I also, you know, I have been out of library school since 2016, and I have done amazing things in my community since I become the director at the Travel College here. Um, and I don't see I don't see an end to insight to the amazing things I can continue to do. So as challenging as any degree is, it's not just a library degree, but any degree is going to be a challenge. And that's why we get them. And you know, we want to challenge ourselves and, and grow and learn. Um, but without that personal idea of what you're going to do with that degree, Sometimes it might be better to, to hold off for a little while. Um, or, you know, I'm definitely a, a leap before you look <laughs> type person sometimes. Um, and with school, I'm often that type of person. I got lucky and I, I got those scholarships. And so I, I jumped right in. Um, and the library is where I want to be. This is definitely where my future lies. And I think that's why it took me so long to get here with my education. Um, so good luck. Um, oh, one more piece of advice. If you don't want to take a GRE, the graduate exam, I'm trying to remember what the R stands for. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a general exam for getting into graduate school. Not all library schools require that. And so be picky, <laughs> you know, pick and choose what library school you're applying to based off of, you don't wanna take a big exam, then don't. Um, choose that school that, you know, might be a little cheaper because they all teach pretty much the same thing. There are definitely some schools that um, might be a little more technical where you'll learn a lot of uh, how to use and how to become familiar with a lot of the technology. But if you're just wanting a, a general library degree, then I really think you can choose, you know, whatever fits in your price range. That's going to be um, the best option for you. What you're going to learn is when you're in the library, that's where your biggest learning opportunities lie. Um, School is just kind of a means to an end, and it gives you some foundational work. Um, but as far as understanding exactly how to run a library, you're not going to learn that in school. You're going to learn that by running a library. So good luck. And like I said at the very beginning, if you want to contact me, feel free to, to send me an email. We can get together on Zoom or have a phone call or just become, you know, email buddies back and forth. I'm definitely willing to help in any way I can. And if you're interested in the San Jose State program and the application, uh, please let me know. Or if you're not ready for that yet, but you want to, um, you know, someone to, to let you know about what's out there in the future, I can definitely help with that. Um, if you join the American Indian Library Association, those are always going out on the email listservs as well. So thank you very much. Uh, good luck. And I really hope that um, you continue to do the good work that you're doing in your community. Hello, I'm Valerie Kingsland. I am a new back. I'm tribally enrolled in the native village of Yinlakleet and um, was born and raised in Alaska. 
I'm glad to share my library school experience with you today. As a bit of a background, reading, of course, has always been important to me. I was fortunate to have parents who supported the, the passion in rural Alaska with lots of book orders and comics. And even as a young child, I understood that this was a privilege and would have um, my friends and my cousins over and they would just pour over my comics. I was kind of funny how they never poured over my books, but definitely over my comic collection. Uh, later on in life, I started a used children clothing donation center and uh, we had books at 10 cents each. And I realized that even that was a barrier when I would hear um, adults tell children to put something back. So they immediately became free. And I've spent the past 15 years working in school and public libraries, really trying to remove the barriers of access um, and promote literacy in our, in our communities and schools. I, I was a part-time library school aide for eight years, and I enjoyed providing programming and craft activities and information literacy activities to the students. And I loved being around books and organizing, um, making information accessible and helping students, staff and teachers. I think I should have known that maybe I could have been a librarian when I learned about Roy G. Biv for the, the, um, the acronym for the, the color spectrum. And I started organizing everything with that color spectrum. And it, but back to grown up, when it was during this time that I was working as a, um, as a library aide, in a school that someone that I was working with shared an opportunity to get a library degree. And I'd been thinking about graduate school and after looking into this particular program and realizing how much I enjoyed working in, in a library, I decided to apply. And it turns out that Alaska Natives and Native Americans make up less than 0.3% of the library profession. So this really was a unique opportunity. I earned a master's in library and information science at San Jose State University School of Information through the Circle of Learning Scholarship Program, which was sponsored um, by the American Indian Library Association. It opened up a lot of incredible opportunities for me to expand my interests and, and my understanding in indigenous matters and in information, um, cultural competency, literacies and lifelong learning among many other, many other interests. The practical factors that led to, to my decision to, to go to grad school and specifically to go to library school was that I was able to do this program online. It was at this point a fully online program and I didn't have to, to do anything in person. So I could do the program from home which was really convenient being, uh, um, having a, a family and having a job. It also had come with full scholarship support, which was really helpful um, to me working a part-time position. And the timing for my family, my children were, um, they weren't so small, but they were old enough to, to take care of themselves when they needed to was also really important. And being able to continue my work in um, my part time work in a library was also a huge factor and to continue and that it related to what I would also be to be learning. It wasn't an easy decision to sacrifice time away from family and from other uh, interests and commitments, but it was one that I definitely don't regret. I completed the 43 credit program in eight semesters taking classes in the spring, fall, and summer sessions. So I didn't take any breaks between the classes except for what already existed between each of the sessions. And there were times when they were almost back to back and that was definitely difficult to, to do, but I was committed to finishing it at the pace that I could manage. I could manage two classes at a time. Um, with my other commitments and my, my family. So to do more than that would have just been too much. The Circle of Learning community, um, my fellow Circle of Learning scholars were a really important part of, of just having that support throughout the program. My school, um, the San Jose State University iSchool, the American Indian Library Association, and lots of um, 
informal mentors, but a, a couple of formal formal mentors and the supporters that we had throughout the program were really important to the success. They provided a network of support that was and really continues to be immeasurable in, in my professional life. Learning online was definitely a big shift, but it, it wasn't a bad one. I was often out of my comfort zone and stretched myself uh, to learn how to design a web page virtually was definitely challenging. And I would get an assignment sometimes and be like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? And the instructors were so well-trained. They were, they were great. Um, I had a, a wonderful experience with a very challenging subject to, to learn about web design and to do that myself with an instructor that would walk me through each one of the steps. So even the challenging courses were, were um, there was a lot of support provided for them. I thrive in action-oriented and technology-driven environments, and I enjoy using and honing my, my communication and technology and work skills to collaborate and work with other people um, and to make good things happen. And the knowledge and the experience that I gained in my program to, to do that really, it, it continues to benefit me today. It helped me to set my work team up um, during the pandemic to be able to work from home to continue to add to to whatever that I do. Um, the challenges of working, uh, the challenges of online grad school was to set up a, um, an ergonomic workstation. I learned very early on that that was really important to do because you're spending a great deal of time at the computer. So having multiple screens, making sure that you have like the right, the right sitting environment, your hands in the right position, you know, for long periods of time, all of those things really made a huge difference. And the school itself was really supportive in providing that type of information to help you get started. And, and, and classmates were also a tremendous source. Other challenges included meeting deadlines. Of course, deadlines can be really difficult when you have lots of other commitments in your life. Um, sometimes technology, when it didn't work, there were times when internet would go down or something wouldn't work. Sound, you know, you'd get ready for for doing an online presentation, and the sound would go would get all wonky. Um, and you learn how to work under pressure. To, in order to meet those challenges. And probably the most difficult was establish, establishing boundaries between um, grad school and, and family and work. So having healthy boundaries was definitely, definitely an important factor. I learned a lot about myself through the program. I'm normally reserved and introvert, introverted, but, but look at me now, I'm sharing my experience with you because when it comes to libraries and literacy and access, I'm enthusiastic and I'm eager to share that. I don't wanna paint such a rosy picture is to not acknowledge the challenges because it is hard. It's, it's definitely, um, it's a commitment. I believe that what you, Put in, you get out of it what you put into it. And, and so you can invest as much of yourself as, as you want to and invest into it. But um, it was also extremely rewarding. I was uh, fortunate to have a school that was very supportive. So whatever school that you might choose to, to go to library school for, um, I would recommend looking at all of the resources that they provide to you. And even looking outside of that, there's a lot of um, student blogs and degree blogs for library students that can really help you along in your experience. I don't know that it was necessarily my favorite thing, but um, probably one of the most memorable things about my grad school experience was all of the group work. Almost every class had group work. And it was challenging, but it's also something that I continue to appreciate because it's um, it prepared me, I think, for real life collaboration and experience working with other people. I recall seeing a quote that my instructor shared during an assignment. We um, we had to build a database, 
And this quote was by Voltaire and it said, perfect is the enemy of the good. And I remember when I got to that point, I was almost done building my database and I saw this quote like alone on the page. And I was like, oh, thank goodness that it, good is, is, is enough, that I do, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I, I think that's the, um, a great thing to take through uh, any kind of a grad school experience, but definitely through, through library school, because it's something that you can continually give to and give to, and, and you have to set up a limit to when, when is it enough. My course strategy was definitely unique. Um, I, having worked in a library, so I worked in a part-time library for a while, and I knew in the Alaska kind of landscape, I already had an idea of what types of training I could easily access outside of library school. So, so my strategy was to take the courses that I wouldn't be able to easily access. And my focus tended to be towards information literacy and instruction, um, digital preservation, and I really enjoy technology and user experience. And something that wasn't quite as um, prominent in any of the studies was integrated library archives and museums. It was something that was kind of expected to be on the horizon, but um, there weren't a whole lot of examples. So, so I would use my assignments for the interest that I had. And I think that's such a great opportunity. You know, you might have a, a class, um, a, a reference library class, but you can modify all those assignments to work towards your personal interests. I would recommend taking advantage of all of the professional development opportunities outside of the school. I, I did and I don't regret it. Um, there's webinars, there's workshops that are sometimes a part of a, a conference or standalone. There's virtual conferences as well as in-person conferences, and there's fellowships and internships as well. So there's a lot of opportunities out there, almost so many that you need to think about what you can afford to do um, both uh, financially as well as your time as well, because it, it's a commitment to, to, tr to travel somewhere or to take time away from something else to, in order to be able to participate but it also expands your network and expands your understanding of, of that um, particular context that you're learning about, whatever it might be, digital preservation or um, some other aspect of, of librarianship. The, a lot of those experiences that I had, including a fellowship, really did lend to be able to to be versatile in the job market after I was, after I completed my degree. So once I graduated, I went on to be a director of a public library with a historical museum and, and multiple archives. So while I was studying integrated library, library archives and museums, I had no idea that I would actually be working in one. So it was really helpful to understand um, some of the similarities between them, but especially the differences because some of the language is very similar between them, but they mean different things. It was, I worked for a local government and that was probably another aspect. There were other job, other parts of the job that I had to do um, that weren't necessarily about the library or the archives or the museum, but still continued to develop my skills. It was challenging, but also rewarding. I learned about working with partners, uh, working for a government agency, the challenge of rapid change and of not having enough resources, trying to figure out how to make things work and, and how to maintain a, a positive working environment and a productive working environment. I now work for a nonprofit developing and manage nationwide library or literacy programs. Um, including one for indigenous communities. So I'm able to take a lot of those skills that I have and use them in a different way. So library skills or, or a library degree doesn't mean that you're limited to working in libraries for the rest of your life. 
the, your, the skills that you gain from a uh, master's in inf information and library science really do lend towards a lot of other opportunities as well. Um, I remember at one point when I was in library school, I was at a conference and I had my tag on going down to, to one of the um, sessions and somebody in the elevator was like, library conference? Are those even around anymore? <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, information is, is still around. It's still very valid. And he kind of looked at me and I said, you know, there is information on cave walls. There is information in, in books. Now there's information on, online and in a lot of other, other ways that we um, access it. So when I said that, he was like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. But I think it's that perception of, you know, library being branded with books. It's such a powerful brand. And it's, it's something that everybody can relate to, but beyond the, the books and beyond the, um, the library building itself, there's so much that we can do with information and, and that we can do to improve access and um, all those good things. That's all that I have to share with you if you're interested in uh, going to library school, I encourage you to, to reach out, to talk to people, um, to join your, your local library association and to ask questions. There's a lot of people out there eager to, to tell you about their experience and to encourage you. Thank you.